going to have to go over some old territory. We'll do it in a little while, but this video, we're going to stitch together and we're going to connect data points in a very pragmatic fashion. And what we're trying to do is we're trying to connect all the dots for everybody from the beginning of what the Lord showed me since I've been saved um, from the Justin Messenger series that was done in 2008 before Barack Obama became the president. Um, there is a prophetic utterance. We're going to show you the parts of it that have happened, how they've happened, what parts have come true, what parts we're waiting on. And we're going to show you the most important thing of all. It's the ground or the, the basis for the spiritual gifting that the Lord let me have. And it, it all starts with Isaiah 29, the King James Version, which I like. It says, Woe unto them who seek deep to hide their counsel from the Lord, who do their works in darkness. And they say, Who seeth us? Like, they're invisible. Who knoweth us? Like, no one can know who they are. Then it says, Surely your turning of things upside down shall be esteemed as the potter's clay. God's a potter, we're the clay. So if you are esteemed as the potter's clay, that means respected or beloved as belonging to God. So your turning of things upside down shall be esteemed, regarded as the work of God. So we're going to show you who they are, what they're doing, and by the end of this video, I, you might have a panic attack. I'm not kidding. Because the other day, the last thing that the Lord showed me was so profound, I almost freaked out. I was like, whoa, you guys did it right in front of our face, and you did it so well, nobody even saw you do it. And it was so big in front of your face and my face, you couldn't even perceive it. But get ready, because by the end of this video, you're going to see who they are and what they did right in front of your face and how they took over your country right in front of your face and you had no idea what they were doing. And it's already happened. It's too late. There's no going back. But there is a solution and the solution is Jesus Christ and you can make your peace with God through the shed blood of Jesus Christ. That's the only hope you have. You have no other hope. I don't care if you have a hundred million dollars. I don't care if you have gold bullion stacked, you know, the height of the Empire State Building, or the One World Freedom Tower for that matter, or if you have a bunker, or if you have enough food to last you 50 years for you and your family. It's not going to make any difference. None of it. None of it's going to matter. There's only one thing that's going to matter when the day that I'm talking about comes around. What did you do with Jesus? Who is Jesus to you? What did you make a decision for Jesus? Did you did you ask God to at least give you, you know, the burden of your own sin that you could reach out to Jesus? There's only one way to God. I don't care what anyone says. There's one way. It's through the shed blood of Jesus Christ for the remission of your sins personally. It has to be personal. It's not a group thing. It's between you and God and Jesus is the only way. That's it. If anyone teaches anything else, they're lying to you. Okay, we're going to do a little thing. I want to show you something. Just while we're here, I want to show you a little thing about the, the letter O. I'm going to draw a brain, and let's call this brain the brain, the massive intelligence that's running humanity. But there's one actually above this one, but I want to show you something. This is a brain, and you're looking down. Let's say we cut off the top of my bald head, okay, and you were looking down on it. And I'm just going to go ahead and draw some lines in here. The Bible says in the end of the world there's going to be a one world religion. There's going to be, you know, Satan's rule on earth. And Satan is a supernatural being. He used to be Lucifer, but when he's cast out, he took on the name Satan. Um, so it's going to be a collective consciousness. And if you don't serve God, you serve Satan. That's all there is to it. I'll give you the scripture. While you were yet my enemies, I saved you. That's what the Lord said. While you were yet my enemies, I saved you. He says, not even one is good, not even one. And you being evil, I'm just going through scriptures. You know how to give good gifts to your children. How much more would your Father in heaven give the Holy Spirit to those who ask? Um, so, we know that we're evil. We are evil. 
And we're going to go through a lot of scriptures in this video, a lot. And you're going to watch the scriptures change before your eyes. They are perfect. The scriptures are perfect. So, we know that Satan is the prince of this world. Because the Bible says, the prince of this world is coming. But Jesus said, but he has nothing on me. So Satan's the prince of this world. He runs it. But God's sovereign. He allows Satan to do it. Satan has to operate within God's guidelines. And so God does allow things. I'm going to, I'm going to change this now. This is, this is a brain, but I'm going to do something with the brain. I'm going to make an outer layer like this. One. One. One collective brain. That's where we're going to end up later. That's the One World Freedom Center right here in the middle with the spire on the top. And we're going to talk about that spire later too. And we're going to talk about what the One World Freedom Center actually is. And I'm going to draw it for you and we're going to show it to you. And by the time we're done, you're going to freak out because it's not what you think it is. It's, it's a representation of the spiritual world manifesting in the physical realm. So what we're going to do is we're going to build on this foundation of this introduction now. And what we're going to do is we're going to build all the steps so you can see who they are and what their goal is, was to achieve a one world religion and a one world rule of Satan on earth, a uh, new world order, and that's what their goals have been. And they're going to get there because God's going to allow them to get there. You know, the Bible says in... Power was given to, unto him, the Antichrist, to overcome the saints. So, in the end, you know, um, the saints will be overcome. And there will be a lot of martyrs. But there's also the Church of Philadelphia, which is the Bride of Christ. And I'll prove it to you using the scriptures. I'll show you the scriptures and what the scriptures say. And I will just leave it with you. I won't say I'll prove it to you. But I'm just going to show you the scriptures and what they say. And you can decide for yourself. I've already decided. The Lord's already shown me what I need to say. So we're going to just present it to you and let you do what you want with it. We have over 13, 14 hours of, of documentary tape that we watched to help present this video to you. And we've gotten the proof that I need to show you how the spiritual gifting that the Lord gave me matches identically what the secular world is saying about the conspiracy. It's not a conspiracy, folks. It's reality. And if you're living in an unsafe condition, you're living a false reality. And that's all there is to it. And that's what our goal is, to show you. We'll, we'll call that false reality. We'll call it the Matrix, okay? And then I'm going to use the Matrix movie to show you some pretty amazing things. And we're going to tie that in. Anyway, I had to set it up first. One. Because they have become one. And you don't want to be one of they. You want to be separate from them. And that's what we're trying to achieve here, to try and get you say. Minaret, Wikipedia, Arabic, Manara, Lighthouse, sometimes a distinctive architectural feature of Islamic mosques, generally a tall spire with an onion-shaped or conical crown, usually either freestanding or taller than any associated support structure the function of a spire, in addition to providing a visual cue to a Muslim community. The main function of a minaret is to provide a vantage point from which to call to prayer or adhan is made. It is used from the highest vantage point to call those to prayer in the Islam community. Wikipedia, spire. A spire is a tapering conical or pyramidal structure on the top of a building, particularly a religious building. Etymologically, it is the word derived from Old English word spire, meaning sprout, root, or stalk of grass. Symbolically, spires have two functions. The first is to proclaim a martial power. A spire, with its reminiscence of a spear point, gives the impression of strength. The second is to reach up towards the skies. The celestial and hopeful gesture of the spire is one reason in its association with religious buildings. When you do a basic Google search for the words Islam spire or Muslim spire, you will, you will get a ton of images that 
show the common characteristics of these uh, these structures and that is that there's a cone-shaped top or a pointy top and there are one or more times than not multiple balconies that, that get higher and higher and the function of these were so that people of Islamic faith would climb to the tallest balcony and they would shout out it's time for prayer and as Jonathan just mentioned it's usually the tallest point in a community. The images we just showed you of the Makkah clock in, in Mecca, that is the second tallest building in the world. When you do this search on Google, whether you realize that or not, on both search results, very close to the top were images of what the United States just placed at the top of the One World Freedom Tower. Here you see it with the cone-shaped top and you see the, the men in the balconies that go all the way up. The similarities between this and an Islamic spire are uncanny, it's striking, it's, it's obvious in my opinion. It is also very disturbing. Why would we place a structure that looks eerily similar? to these Islamic spires or minarets um, when it was the extreme factions of that same religion that were responsible, according to our government, for the destruction of the Twin Towers. Uh, that doesn't make any sense from a secular point of view. Just looking at it just by being Mr. and Mrs. America, this should enrage you and upset you. Another question is, why would the sitting American president sign the beam that would end up being the highest beam in the entire tower, the One World Freedom Tower? Why would he sign this beam with the phrase, we remember, we rebuild, we come back stronger? For anyone that's seen Rabbi Jonathan Kahn's work, you would understand the significance of this event. Jonathan Kahn made these connections uh, a long time ago before this beam was signed, before it was placed, and before this spire looking structure was placed on top of the One World Freedom Tower. And, and his work is called The Harbinger, and we'll cover you know the key points of it, but if you haven't seen it, go watch the entire presentation and his follow-up, the Isaiah 910 Judgment. Another important question to ask is why would the same president sign with his left hand this beam where you can see his wedding ring on his finger and we know that this ring he's been wearing for 30 plus years which has the inscription of a prayer that states no god but allah um, here's a picture of him when he was young and here it is now him wearing it and here he is with the ring signing this beam so he's high as a ring it says no god but Allah and he's saying we remember we rebuild we come back stronger on this beam that gets put into this giant tower that has a Islamic looking spire at the very top there are more unanswered questions with this president why would the Obama administration plan to give 450 million dollars to the Muslim Brotherhood, who's now running Egypt. Why would Barack Obama appoint John Brennan for the CIA chief when these claims have come out that he converted to Islam years ago while he was stationed in Saudi Arabia? Why would he appoint six Islamic activists that have ties to the Muslim Brotherhood in key political positions of office? Here are the men. Most notably, Arif Ali Khan, who as this report suggests, he provides the direct link between the Obama administration and the Arab Spring Revolutions of 2011, which were presented as an organic democratic process taking place, but behind the scenes was the Muslim Brotherhood just spreading their tendrils throughout the region. These six individuals and John Brennan and our government should, should upset you. All of these questions can't be answered from a strictly worldly, secular point of view, because it does not make sense. 
And what we're here to do in this video is to give you the biblical take on this set of events. The tearing down of the Twin Towers on 9-11-2001 and the rebuilding of this One World Freedom Tower is of paramount importance. This is a spiritual event that is bleeding over into the physical realm as a beacon, as a signal, as a mockery of God, a signal to all that follow Satan that they have succeeded to, to mock what Jesus said when he said, tear down this temple and I will rebuild it in three days. He was talking about his body. We know that the destruction of the Twin Towers was a spiritual event, was a satanic attack because he was broadcasting his plans well before it was carried out in 2001 in 1985 in the movie Back to the Future. Uh, we see this sign that says Twin Pines Mall and when you turn it upside down we see the time to be 9-11. Later in the film he comes back to it and it is the Lone Pine Mall. The Simpsons showed the currency being tied to 9-11. This was in 1997. Are we gonna die, son? Yeah, but at least we'll take a lot of innocent people with us. There was a movie called The Long Kiss Goodnight with Samuel L. Jackson, and it spells out the, the conspiracy pretty much word for word that there would be an attack, they would blame it on Muslims, they would actually kill people, and that it would give them an excuse for more military funding. This is precisely what happened. Take a look. World Trade Center bombing, remember? During the trial, one of the bombers claimed the CIA had advanced knowledge. The diplomat who issued the terrorist visa was CIA. It's not unthinkable they paved the way for the bombing, purely to justify a budget increase. You're telling me that you're going to fake some terrorist thing just to get some money out of Congress? Well, unfortunately, Mr. Hennessy, I have no idea how to fake killing 4,000 people. So we're just going to have to do it for real. Oh, blame it on the Muslims, naturally. Then I get my funding. The examples go on and on. You can do your own research on this. But the point is, it was a spiritual event. Satan told us what he was going to do, and then he did it to look all powerful to his followers. That's how he. That's how he mocks God. Another way. So the obvious question: When you see these 9/11 hints in all these films and other forms of media, the amount of conspirators it boggles the mind. Like, were these people aware? that the clock read 9-11 and that it was Twin Pines and then Lone Pine and, and Terminator and The Simpsons and Kiss the Girls, did they know what they were writing and what they were portraying or was there some spirit that was operating within them and why were they vulnerable to this spirit? That is why we must go to the parable of the wheat and tares. That's why Jesus said this is the mystery that was hidden since the beginning of the age. Now watch as the punk in the beginning, points up at the camera, then tells the officers, go ahead, ready, start. And then they look around, they say, you ready? All right, begin. Now, you didn't see that beginning. They cut it out. To understand the paradigm and the reality in which we live, you must first understand the story of the wheat and the weeds, and that the parable explains mysteries hidden since the creation of the world. To understand the significance of the destruction of the Twin Towers, one must first understand the reality of the two different species growing together like twins. The parable of the wheat and the weeds in the book of Matthew illustrates the two different species growing together. The destruction of the Twin Towers was Satan's declaration that the twins were gone and that the two had become one as evidenced by the building of the One World Trade Center. The One World Trade Center's architecture represented an upside down seed joined together with the right side up seed, thus forming the new race in one new body. 
thus representing the forming of the completed human race in the form of a hive controlled by the spirit of Satan. As God himself had taken on human flesh in the form of Jesus Christ, Satan himself would also take on flesh in the second beast, Barack Obama. The bricks have fallen down, but we will rebuild with dressed stone. The fig trees have been felled, but we will replace them with cedars. Through the destruction of the Twin Towers and the tearing down of what once existed, the building of the One World Trade Center would represent Satan's recreation of a temple in which he would sit as the king. The commingling of the serpent seed with the seed of the woman by signing an 11,000 pound steel beam and by writing the words, we remember, we rebuild, we come back stronger. Satan would scoff at the Most High God, Yahweh. The statement would reflect Satan's defiance towards God by claiming his temple had been rebuilt and that the two had become one through the intercourse with human women. Matthew 13, verse 24. Another parable he put forth to them, saying, The kingdom of heaven is like a man who sowed good seed in his field. But while men slept, his enemy came and sowed tares among the wheat, and went his way. But when the grain had sprouted and produced a crop, then the tares also appeared. So the servants of the owner came and said to him, Sir, did you not sow good seed in your field? How then does it have tares? He said to them, An enemy has done this. The servants said to him, Do you want us then to go and gather them up? But he said, No, lest while you gather up the tares, you also uproot the wheat with them. Let both grow together until the harvest, and at the time of harvest I will say to the reapers, First gather together the tares and bind them in bundles to burn them, but gather the wheat into my barn. And his disciples came to him, saying, Explain to us the parable of the weeds of the field. He answered and said to them, He who sows the good seed is the Son of Man. The field is the world, the good seeds are the sons of the kingdom, but the tares are the sons of the wicked one. The enemy who sowed them is the devil. The harvest is the end of the age, and the reapers are the angels. Therefore, as the tares are gathered and burned in the fire, so it will be at the end of this age. The Twin Towers were a representation of the wheat and the weeds. Now, everybody know what a DNA marker looks like? Well, I'll tell you what. Let me just show you the Twin Towers first. Here the Twin Towers are. You see them? You see the Twin Tower here and here? You see, you see the windows going this way? See them? Okay. I'm not really showing you the Twin Towers. You know what I'm really showing you? I'm showing you DNA markers. Watch. Those are DNA markers, and we're going to fade them right on. Those are real DNA markers. So here's one DNA marker. Here's, here's one species. Here's another. They're right alongside each other. Now let's, let's fade into the Twin Towers. Watch. Oh, wow. Look at that. What's up with that? Okay, well, huh. Why would they bomb the Twin Towers that represent the two different DNAs? Well, here's the reason why. Because they're saying, hey, there's no longer two, there's one. Because when those towers were bombed, and we're going to edit this in, the Illuminati and all their little, you know, satanic freak show, they walked down into this pit, and they formed the all-seeing eye. You're telling me that you're gonna fake some terrorist thing just to scare some money out of Congress? Well, unfortunately, Mr. Hennessy, I have no idea how to fake killing 4,000 people. So we're just gonna have to do it for real. Oh, blame it on the Muslims, naturally. <laughs> then I get my funding. Down in the pit, and they made an image of the all-seeing eye to represent who had taken control? Love Talk Radio. I'm gonna I'm gonna explain to you really quickly the world that you live in and what's what's going on, what's about to happen. 
where it is in the Bible and what you can expect. Okay, we all know we had these two buildings called the Twin Towers. Um, Y'all should know by now that they were a representation of the wheat and the weeds. Uh, The two different races that were growing alongside each other, the wheat and the weeds, or the sheep and the goats, or the seed of the serpent and the seed of the woman, they're all analogous. And they they all mean the same thing. And so, they were growing together, and then they were blown up, and it was by design... Because the prince of this world is Satan, and he's been working towards his one one world rule on earth, you know, of Satan on earth. He doesn't want God in schools, God in church. He doesn't want God anywhere. He wants to be the God of this world. And that's okay. Uh, the God Almighty is going to allow that for a while. But he's God Almighty is still in control, you know, Yahweh. Uh, They bombed the Twin Towers. The bombings were actually printed on U.S. currency. Y'all know the whole paradigm. Those who try and hide their plans, they turn everything upside down. Who is they? They are fallen angels. Fallen angels are also alien demonic beings. That's who they are. That's uh, that's been established. It's, It's been beaten like a dead horse. So we have those as established facts. So now, it took... Instead of, you know, you know, a year and a half to build a one World Freedom Center, it took 12 years. 12 years is the, 12 is the number of completion. What was built where the Twin Towers were was a combination called the One World Freedom Center. The One World Freedom Center is a representation of a new world order. Uh, the two have become one. That's why there were the twins, and now there's one. So the two have become one, and I, this is very important. On the very top of the building, before they put the spire on, Barack Hussein Obama, he signed a beam that had the logo One World Freedom Tower on that beam, and the letter O made a big brain, so it means a collective consciousness, and on that big beam that had the image of a brain on it, he signed, he signed the words, we remember, we rebuild, we come back stronger. And he's, he's referencing the fallen angels, and he's scoffing at God. He's saying, you tried to get rid of us, but we're back, and we're back stronger than we were before. And he's, he's referencing the Tower of Babel, and he's also referencing Islam has taken over this country from the inside. It's a representation of the abomination that causes desolation that has taken over the temple, which is us, from the inside. So the seed of the serpent has taken over the seed of the woman from the inside. That's why Lady Gaga said, and I'm going to quote Lady Gaga. She said, yes, there's all sorts of people all over the world with so many different views, but... Uh, most importantly, I think it's about bringing people together. The performance we did last night at the Grammys was, and uh, and what we've been doing with the egg and the rebirth, uh, yeah. it's meant to signify a an artistic statement of birthing a new race. It's meant to signify a an artistic statement of birthing a new race. Uh, it's a race with no prejudice, uh, a race within the race of humanity. A race within the race of humanity. A race within the race of humanity yeah. that bears no um, uh, prejudice against anyone. So um, it, that's really the statement in itself. Well, that's great. That's really good. That's really good. Now, you are... Where did they plant their seed? Genesis 6.4, when the sons of God had intercourse with human women, they gave birth to the Nephilim. Nephal means fallen, em means one. One. The fallen ones. Oh. So that means if they bred with humans, we got a hybrid situation. So you have wheat and weeds together. And they're going to grow together until the harvest. But at the end of the harvest, God is going to separate them. The so minaret is a distinctive architectural feature of an Islamic mosque. It resembles a small balcony going around the spire in which... Those in the community of Islam go to the highest point. Did you hear me? 
listen, the highest point in order to call Islam to worship. Well, guess what the highest building in the U.S. is, folks? The One World Freedom Tower. And guess what's around the top of the spire? And I will prove it. Upside down and right side up pyramids all around the top. And then the spire goes up from that. And guess what's right on top of it? A minaret. And what is a minaret? Let, let, me, let me tell you what the function is. The function of a minaret, in addition to providing a visual cue, a visual cue... To the Muslim community, the main function of the minaret is to provide a vantage point from which to call to prayer or adhan is made. The building itself is, it, there is on ground zero, there has been built and there is currently existing on ground zero a Muslim mosque on ground zero. Okay? Did y'all know that? Okay, there is an exact replica of the Kaaba, which is in Mecca, which is a big above ground square chunk of granite. It's a square piece of granite. It's above ground and it has walls all the way around it in a square. And it's in Mecca and that's where Islam goes to worship. Well, if you took that same exact thing from Mecca, that whole area that they worship in, and you sliced under it with a big serrated knife, and you cut underneath the Kaaba, and you cut it all out, and you picked it up with your hand, and you turned it upside down and stuffed it into the ground at 9-11, then you've got an exact replication of what is in Mecca. But it's been turned upside down. They stuffed it in the ground. So they put the big Kaaba down into the ground and they have a big black granite cube in the ground. Let me tell you what, they did it on 9-11. Does anybody know why? They're using the Bible as a playbook and in essence they are. It's, it's a way of being flippant before our Heavenly Father. They're, 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 it's, it's, um, it's part of their way of desecrating the scripture. And one of the things that they they did was uh, this whole 9-11. This is going to blow your mind, folks. Okay, so there's two key places that these forces of darkness in the Bible, 9-11, think about it, 9-11. Well, you have in Genesis, you've got Genesis uh, chapter 11 and the first nine verses, all right? And in uh, Genesis chapter 11, the first nine verses, uh, it talks about the Tower of Babel. All right. Now, why would that be interesting to these 9-11 Luciferian, human-sacrificing, filthy, demonic creatures? Well, because it says right here, But the Lord came down to see the city of the tower which the sons of men had built, and the Lord said, Indeed, the people are one, and they have one language, and this is what they begin to do. Now listen, this is, the, this is the most important part of this whole scriptural segment. Now nothing that they propose to do will be withheld from them. Did you get that? Nothing that they propose to do will be withheld from them. See, that's a huge statement. And there are many theologians who have done extreme studies of the Hebrew text and believe that this was – Rob Skeeb is one of them. There's other ones that there was – this was a type of a technology, that this wasn't just some kind of a, uh, you know, a tiered a pyramidic structure, that this was actually a, some type of esoteric, ancient fallen angel type of a technology. Okay, but nothing – Nothing that they propose to do will be withheld from them? That's huge. And, of course, that would be Genesis 11, the first nine verses. 9-11. Get it? 11-9, right? <clears throat> All right. Well, that's one little dark symbolism thing that they use to scoff at our Heavenly Father. But now let's take a look at Revelation 9-11. Let me tell you what. They did it on 9-11. Does anybody know why? The Lord just showed it to me. Let me read to you Revelation 9:11. And they had a king over them 
who is the angel of the bottomless pit, whose name in Hebrew tongue is Abaddon, but the Greek tongue, tongue he has a name Apollyon. Well, why is that so significant? Because when they bombed 9-11, they were making a statement that their king, Apollyon, is rising. And they just crowned him because the word minaret, by the way, also means crown. They just crowned the representation in the physical realm of the rebuilt temple of a fallen angel over a human. And they did it because they know their king. Who's their king? Who's their king? The angel of the bottomless pit whose name is Abaddon, Apollyon. Mystery saw, folks, it's over. My mother was born in Kansas. My father was born in Kenya. And I was born, of course, in Hawaii. That building is a representation of a one world religion, one, one world rule of Satan on earth, Islam over the United States, the fall of the United States to Islam. It's over. And their king, Abaddon, who is in Revelation 9-11, has risen because the tower has risen and it's been crowned. Okay, here we go. Alright guys, here we go. Let's wrap this thing up. So the purpose of this video is to show you the physical manifestation of the spiritual world in which you live. You live in the matrix and unless you're awake, you belong to the evil one. And I'll use the scriptures. Arise, O sleeper, wake up from the dead and Christ will give you light. Here's another scripture. Jesus told the guys that were invited to follow him, he said, let the dead bury their own dead. Because you're literally the walking dead. And I want to show you now the physical manifestation of the spiritual world. And we're going to use the Twin Towers. These are the Twin Towers. These are representations of the Twin Towers. Each one represents a different species. The wheat, the weeds. They're growing alongside each other, but they look identical. You can't tell the difference. The only time you can tell the difference is at the harvest. They're growing alongside each other. Each one represents... 23 and 23 chromosomes. Okay, that's the number of completed chromosomes when you add them together, you get 46. 23 and 23 equals 46. So each tower represented 23 chromosomes. When they bombed these, President Bush read Psalm 23. Wow, what are the odds? Well, how come when Barack Obama stood and christened this and he read at ground zero on September 11th. How come he read Psalm 46? Psalm 46, it took 46 years to build the temple. Oh, 46 uh, chromosomes in human DNA. Oh, so the fallen angels are saying they've rebuilt the temple, but it's a fallen angel temple over a human. Now, I know there's a lot of people that think there's going to be a rebuilt temple in Jerusalem. Well, there was a lot of Pharisees that thought Jesus meant destroy this temple and in three days I'll raise it up. He wasn't talking about a building. The Jews said it took 46 years to build the temple. And Jesus said, you've heard what I said, but you haven't understood it. He was talking about his body being the temple. Now, let's see what happened. These things got blown up, so... <laughs> They're blown up. They're on the $20 bill. So someone or something has arranged that and pre-planned it. And we know it was Satan using humans as puppets. We, we already showed you who they are. Satan and the fallen angels. That's who they are. Those that try and hide their plans from the Lord are doomed. They carry out their schemes in secret. What schemes? These schemes. And think no one will see them or know what they're doing. They turn everything upside down. Okay, well, here's another representation of who they are. They are the pyramid. Like the capstone, you know, on the, on the back of the dollar bill. This is who they are. They are the all-seeing eye. That's who they are. 
They're the weeds. They're the, they're the other half part of you. It's the abomination is in you. You're the temple. Now watch this. They carry out their schemes in secret and think no one will see them or know what they're doing. So they bomb the Twin Towers and they're making a proclamation in public saying there's no longer two races. Each one of these, let's put a little circle here and a line through and say that represents the brain. They both have two separate consciousnesses, but when they've been bred together, these two consciousnesses are at odds with each other and they fight each other. You have your good side and your bad side. And then they built the One World Freedom Tower. Now what did they put at the top of this tower? They put a beam at the top and Obama signed the beam and he wrote, he wrote the words, we remember, we rebuild, and we come back stronger. WWW is va va va, Hebrew is alphanumeric, it equals 666. So at the top of this building is a beam that has 666 on it, and it has an image of a big brain, which is the letter O for One World Freedom Tower. So they're saying now there's one collective consciousness. Look at the way this thing's built. You see the upside down pyramid right here, and the right side up pyramid, and the whole thing is a mirror. As above, so below. So they're mocking you. This is a representation with the spire and the minaret around it of the largest symbol of Islam in, in, in the Western Hemisphere. This is, an, a, this is a tribute to Islam. Down at the bottom here they have the reflecting pool. So if I went under there and I turned the whole thing upside down and shoved it down into the ground at the One World Freedom Center, then you have Mecca, the Kaaba at the One World Freedom Center, you have 666 on the top, you have a spire which stands for martial, like martial power, martial law, Sharia law, and you have a minaret which is the call to worship Islam. This is the end of the road. This is Islam over the United States. Remember the controversy? They said they were going to put a mosque at ground zero? They did. And there's a mosque on the property, by the way. Judgment's coming to this country, and this is it. Barack Hussein Obama's it. This country's, it's over. Now's the time to make your peace with God. There's only one way. This is an altar call for anyone who's watching. It's time to go to God and say, I'm a sinner. I deserve to go to hell. I know I'm your enemy, but the Bible says, if I confess Jesus Christ as my Lord and Savior and accept his sacrifice on the cross for my sins, and I believe in my heart he was raised on the third day through faith by grace, I can be saved. And I'm asking you, Father, save me in the name of Jesus Christ. I accept Jesus and you repent. Repent means turn and go the other way. Go the other way. Turn away from your sins. Because there's no getting better anymore, guys. There's no country that's going to come around. There's no economy that's going to get fixed. There's no future. The only future is Jesus Christ. That's it. And that's what this video was to show you. To, to nail the lid in the coffin on the bad guys. And it's not governments, it's not ideologies, it's Satan using humans as puppets, just like the Matrix. That's what you're dealing with, and you can't fight that. It's a spiritual war, and you have to go to the Father. That's the only chance you have. So I hope this video finds a place in your heart. I hope you understand who they are, what their plan is to kill sheep, as many of them as they can, and to produce as many as their own kind as they can, and to have a satanic rule on earth. They don't want God on this earth anymore. But Satan wants it for himself. That's it. Mystery solved. The Lord told me years ago he was going to use me to solve the riddle of ages, and I had no idea what he meant. Look at the hieroglyph. Look at the U.S. currency. Look at the 250 videos the Lord's allowed me to do, and look at the reality of what's coming. That's it. It's time to get right with God, guys. It's time. Don't have long left. I don't think you have long at all. 
what you're about to hear is a re-recorded prophetic utterance that was given to me in 2007 and 2008 before Barack Obama became the president. Behold, thus saith the Lord of hosts, the hand of the oppressor has been lifted against you, and out of the sea shall come fire and smoke and a devouring wind. Water as high as the walls of Jerusalem will cover the city by the sea, and great shall be the destruction of that city. Behold, the great wall, which holds back the abundance of the rivers, shall burst forth, bringing the hand of the oppressor against you. For I have seen it, says the Lord. For mighty is your enemy that is risen from within your own borders. Now behold, the abomination of desolation spoken about Daniel the prophet, standing in the holy place where it should not be. Here is the mystery made known to you. You are the holy place of which I speak. And the abomination of desolation shall rise from within the walls of the temple to destroy the temple. For have you not seen? Have you not heard? Has it not been made known to you? Have you not read the scriptures? For when the sons of God came in unto the daughters of men, they did bear children to them, and the same became mighty men. Has not the sea turned mighty? And the sea shall turn terrible before your very eyes, and the terrible one shall be elevated within the sea. And behold, the man of peace, Barak Hussein Obama, shall come forth from the sea, and with words of peace, he will bring chaos and destruction. Behold, the fig tree puts forth its leaves, and suddenly the time is upon you. The travail begins, and it will not stop until the holy nation is brought forth.